I made a documentary called Happy. We see it here, we see it happy. Oh, wow, totally cool, right? Thank you. So that's the fusion of the science and the practice of happiness around the world. And one of the things that we discovered is we were talking to the scientists and to the people who were finding happiness was that we kept bumping up against this sort of idea of flow, being in flow. And it got us really thinking, what is quality of happiness? What the happy flow basically is, is how to find balance in the duality of existence that we live in. Are we inside or outside? Are we hot, or cold, or warm? Are we happy? What are our dualities? And the happy stuff basically is the science that proves that you should probably be outside more than inside. You should probably give more than take. You should probably be more active than sedentary. But what we were thinking about now is how to go from balance to harmony. Like who here has had, who's been in a flow state before, right? Pretty much, okay, who hasn't been in a flow state? Who's like, I don't think I've ever been in a flow state? Okay, so this is see, this is one of the theories my brother and I have, is that we've all had it. Whether we were playing music, or taking a hike, or playing some sort of sport, or reading a book, you, you lose yourself in the experience. How much time passed? It's already dark. Am I hungry? I think I'm cold. Where'd everyone go? They were just in this timeless, place. And so the first time I ever experienced that was when I was in junior high school, I used to speed skate and on ice racing around. And I was pretty good when I was 12 and 13 and I used to uh, train with the U.S. Olympic team. And they picked a few of us young kids to train with them. We were all naturally gifted. We all had, we were in excellent condition. We all had the best equipment. So the only competitive advantage that we could spend our time developing was mental. So we started going very deep into Eastern philosophy, learning the mind, breath work, visualization. And what we found at that level of racing was that no longer were we racing the race. We had a great coach, we called him Obi-Wan Kenobi. We had a coach for every single thing we did, starts, turns, strategies, everything. We had this one coach who after every race would come by us, and he would just ask us one question, how was your race? And when I was 12 and 13 years old, I was like, I won, it was great, I lost, it sucked. Like, what kind of question are you asking me? And after a couple of weeks, you know, I understood what all the other coaches were teaching me. I had no idea what he was teaching me. So I came up to him and I said, why do you keep asking me, how was the race? You saw the race, I won, it was great, I lost, it sucked. He said, you're not listening to me. I didn't ask you how the race was. I asked you how your race was. Thought about it for a second. Class. Well, one, two unit class in the evening. And 
number one lesson I learned from that was, what is your objective? Before you get on the stage, what is your objective? And the art of acting is not the objective here. I was going to walk on, I was going to say hi, I was going to smile, I was going to put my coat on. What's my objective here? Who am I? What am I embodying? What is I'm trying to convey? It was fascinating because I never did acting. And I would see this was the University of Southern California, so there were, you know, actors who come for many years and people just wanted to like me. It didn't matter what training they had. Because it was a <clears throat> it was an evening class and two minutes kids, no problems. And you could tell almost before the person stepped into the corner of the class whether they were on or not. It was fascinating. You could just see it instinctual. The other most important class I took in college was improv. Who here is taking improv class? Even though we improv, every single moment of our life is an improv, right? Great in the morning, you got the best laid plans. You prepare, you did all the right things, and then life happens. And the art of improv is very simple, right? It's a yes and. It's an action oriented. It's not like, oh my god, I can't believe this happened to me. And so I became fascinated by where does this come from? Also, you know, instinct, like, this place is really cool. Ten days ago, I was in East Texas between Dallas and Shreveport, talking to a group of um, kids in the high school and a Christian college. Very different crew like this here. Except for, every time I said, has anyone been in flow state? Same like all of us. No. And we started talking about the flow state. The stories were different, but the experience was the same. You know, it's funny because it seemed like a lot of you guys, when we talk about flow state, when we remember it, the smile comes to our face. It's like it's a joyous experience. And so, so what my brother and I are working on now is this documentary called The Evolution of the Happy Film. It's going to be on consciousness. The idea is where does this come from? Because we all know it's an instinctual thing. When I turned 25, I kind of thought about my life and I thought, okay, you know, what worked well, what didn't work well, and why? My 30s flew by in three films and traveling around the world. And at 40, I kind of sat and thought about it. And what I realized was there was two essential things to my success and happiness. Success externally and success internally. And that's when I was playful and curious. The curiosity made me engage with the world and playfulness freed me to do so. And so these are the things that we're feeling the consciousness felt right now. So we're looking at the science of it, but also the practice of what we're is we right now travel around the world and spend three months in Asia looking at consciousness from an Asian perspective. And now off to Europe to look at consciousness from a European perspective. So the fundamentals are the same, but the stories that are wrapped around it are different. The mythologies, the histories, the cultures, even the environment. You know, if you go talk to cultures that grew up that were sort of from an Amazonian rainforest environment, their mythology is different, but the fundamental stories are the same. And so these are the kind of things we're working on. I frankly hate talking, that's why I do documentaries, because I'm behind the scenes. I don't have any questions, because I know we're running late too. I just want to share some of those ideas. Yeah? Um, so you said that consistent story. Mm -hmm. What is that idea of the story and how we should be Sure. What's so fascinating about, about consciousness rather than happy research is that consciousness stuff isn't a story in and of itself, it leads to an understanding. Like happiness and stuff is intellectual. Consciousness is experiential. And so what's so fascinating is that the stories don't tell you how to get somewhere. They describe what it is when you get there. That's what's so fascinating about it. It's about a place, about a state of being, rather than sort of the journey, which is what we're calling the evolution. So there's many iterations of that. And one thing that we did with whoever's seen the happy film. Happy film is not about telling you what to do to be happy. It's about you thinking about what it means to be happy. And then consciousness is the same thing, just like when I asked everyone who's been in a flow state. We've all had it. Now, we've all had it. Anyone have a negative flow state experience? What? Damn it! <laughs> I thought it was a flow state experience. So, like, so, so the thing is, why don't we live more in that flow state experience? What keeps us from? I'm actually doing market research now for the film. Thinking. Our mind. Thinking. The mind. Structured time. Structured time. Planning. Which is also in the head. We keep thinking about bad stuff that's happening. Reliving the past. Fear. Fear. 
of what? Of your future? Success or failure? Agenda. Ego? Agenda. Agenda? Social norms? Exactly. So we all know what keeps us from it. And the ideas of what gets us into it. What are the things that got you into that state? Presence? Intuition? Awareness? Openness, deadlines. What's it? Leading into connection. What's it? Leading into connection. So we all know the things that got us into nature. And that's another fascinating thing. It's what triggers that in people? You know? What triggers it in one person may not trigger it to another person. The thing is, you have to understand what triggers it in you. And it also changes over time. It's changed over time for me. You know, it's done really with girl, <coughs> girls and fast cars and all that stuff. And now it's helping other people, being in nature, inner sort of journey rather than external things. Have a question? Uh, and so, so, so now, why do you think we do not spend more time in flow? I mean, we talk about it, but so we know what gets us into it. We know what keeps us up. Why don't we spend more time there? Why? That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why do you, one of my theories is that it's an odd experience to most people. Like when you're born in Eastern cultures, born in indigenous cultures, if someone has an odd experience, it's embraced. You know, if you're a hermaphrodite or something, you're seeing something special, not something weird and to be put away, yes.